This video is over section 2.6 and goes over a problem that involves sine functions. All right, so this is number 43 in your book and it actually has a couple of different sine functions going on. So let's go ahead and go through it. All right, so it gives us the limit as x approaches zero of that whole big mess there. Okay, so remember when we have these types of problems and we're solving limits algebraically, our first step that we always wanna do is to try direct substitution, see what happens. All right, so I try direct substitution. I plug in zero wherever I see an x. On the top, I get sine times three times zero, or sine of three times zero, which is just sine of zero. Remember, sine of zero is just zero. Times sine of zero again, zero. Over on the bottom, I'll get zero times sine of zero, also zero. I have zero over zero. That's an indeterminate form. That means do more work. And remember, when I'm working with trig functions, my do more work, the simplifying that I want to do, is I want to first make sure that my function is rewritten in terms of sine and cosine. And then second, I want to make it try to match an identity. Now in this problem, we only have sine functions, so we're only worried about the sine identity. And remember, that tells us that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 1. But remember, this x, it doesn't have to just be x. It could be sine anything over that same anything. and the identity works, that limit is just one. All right, so for this type of problem, I'm gonna separate it out into different um, fractions. So hopefully it's a little bit easier to see what we need to do in order to get this function to match this identity. All right, so I have the sine um, limit as x approaches zero of sine three x, I'm gonna keep that over x, times sine two x over one, times one over sine five x. All right, so I just split up my function, wrote it like this. Now I'm gonna multiply it by something so that each of these sections matches this identity. So remember my identity is sine something over that same something equals one. So at this first fraction, I have sine three x over x. Well, what am I missing here? This something doesn't match this something. So I need to multiply it by a number so that they do match. Um, in this case, I'm going to multiply it by 3 over 3. So that way, when I bring the 3 over, I'll have sine 3x over 3x. It matches the identity now. Same thing for the next um, fraction. I have sine 2x over 1. What's missing here? Well, I need a 2x on the bottom. So for this part, I'm going to multiply by 2x over 2x. And now going to the third fraction, I have 1 over sine 5x. What's missing here? Well, I need a 5x on the top. Even though this fraction is flipped over and it's inverted, the rule still works the same way. So for this third fraction, I'm gonna multiply by 5x over 5x. All right, from here, I'm just gonna rearrange some things so it's easier to see how each of these parts matches our identity. So this first fraction here, I'm gonna bring the three over. So now I have sine of 3x over 3x times, remember, I still have a three in the denominator here. So I'm just going to write that right here so we don't forget about it. Okay, now for my second fraction, I have sine of 2x over 1. I'm going to bring my 2x over. I have sine 2x over 2x. But remember, I still have a 2x here in the, denom or in the numerator. So I'm going to write that there so we keep track of it. And now for this third fraction, fraction here, I'm going to bring my 5x over. So I have 5x over sine 5x times, now I have a 5x left over in the denominator. Okay, from here, hopefully it's easier to see how each of these parts matches our identity. And remember, this whole problem is asking us for the limit as x approaches zero of this function here. We just rewrote it a little bit. Now, wherever we have a fraction that matches our identity, I can just cross that out and put one. Because remember, that's what our identity says. The limit as x approaches zero of sine something over something equals one. Okay, so I have sine three x over three x. Cross that out, that's just one. Sine two x over two x. That's one. Five x over sine five x. Remember, it works the same way, even though it's flipped. That's just one. And now I'm just going to see what I'm left over with. So I have the limit as x approaches zero of I have a three here times my two x times a one over five x. All right, multiply that out. Three times two x gives me six x over five x. My x's can cancel, and now I'm just left with. 6 over 5. And remember how um, in our first step when we tried direct substitution, we got 0 over 0 in an indeterminate form? 
Well, when we rewrote the function a little bit, simplified it out, my answer ended up being just 6 over 5, which is a valid answer, which means that we are done. This is um, the answer to this problem. The limit as x approaches 0 of that really huge function that we started with is just 6 over 5. And that's the end of this problem. Now, just brief recap, I had this huge function here. My first step, direct substitution, led me to an indeterminate form. So from there, I wanted to first make sure that the entire function is written in terms of sine and cosine, which it already is. And then from there, make each sine function match the identity. And I did that by multiplying um, each fraction by a term. That would leave me with sine something over that same something. From there, each fraction that matched the identity, I just crossed out because it equals 1. And then from there, I multiplied everything out and got my answer 6 over 5. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.